Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and welcome to probably one of my biggest unboxings ever. I have collected a ton of different packages that have come to my house in the past couple of weeks and wanted to unbox them for you to share the cool books and different packages that I have received recently. But before we get into the unboxing, I want to share with you the sponsor for today's video and it is Book of the Month. Book of the Month promotes new and emerging authors to help readers discover new books that they will love. Each month, their team vets hundreds of novels and provides readers with a selection of new and early release titles to pick from, so you can spend more time reading and less time researching books to add to your TBR. The titles for this month's selections are The Many Daughters of a Fong Moy by Jamie Ford, When We Were Bright and Beautiful by Jillian Medoff, Bronze Drum by Fong Nguyen, Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney, Small Angels by Lauren Owen, The Devil Takes You Home by Gabino Iglesias, and Girl Forgotten by Karen Slaughter. The two books that I I picked out for book of the month are Bronze Drum by Fong Nguyen. I'm always trying to add new diverse historical fictions to my TBR so this sounds right up my alley. And then I picked out Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. Daisy Darker follows a family who is very estranged but they come together for one night on this island but when their grandma is found dead and an hour later another family member is found dead they're starting to realize that one by one they're being killed off. This sounds perfect for fans of And Then There Were None and I love a good murder mystery that is set on a remote island. Can not wait to dive into this. I think it's going to be such a fun time. If you want to try a book of the month for yourself, click the link in my description and use the code SIZZLE to get your first book for $9.99. Also, be sure to check out Book of the Month's podcast, which is called Virtual Book Tour, which is available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video, and now let's get into the book unboxings. Let's start from the top to the bottom obviously, because that will be easiest for me. A friend who works for this publishing company reached out to send me a couple of romance books, and I have been on the biggest romance book kick and have been wanting to devour all of them, so I have three romance novels that I have to share with you all. The first one is Bombshell by Sarah McLean. One of my friends, Summer, said that this is a really fun feminist romance that I am going to absolutely love, and I've been trying to get deeper into historical romance. I'm trying to add a couple of them to my TBR, and this sounds right up my alley. Next we have Wedding Crasher by Maya Sosa. This one says the award-winning author of The Worst Best Man is back with a hilarious rom-com about two strangers who get trapped into a lie and have to fake date their way out of it. I love the fake dating trope. I think it is one of the most superior romance tropes. I cannot wait to get into this one because this is also by a Latina author, so this is one that I'm also very excited about. I'm probably going to say excited multiple times in this video, just get used to it. It's just the best word, okay? Everyone uses it when they do unboxings. I'm just excited about all of these books. And then the last book in this box is Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. So we follow Marcus, who is the star of one of the biggest shows on television, but he's also a fan fiction writer for his own show because he's pretty upset with the way that the storyline is going, so he's deciding to write his own fan fiction about his own show. And then we follow April. One day, April decides to post a plus-sized cosplay from the show, and Marcus decides to ask her out to spite the internet critics. But he realizes that he has a lot more in common with her than he initially thought, and their romance blooms. One of my best friends said that they loved this book. It just seems so cute and so fun, so I'm very excited about this as well. So those are all the packages from the Harlequin box, so let's move to the next box, which I have no idea about. This feels like deal or no deal, like ooh, what box are you gonna pick next? Oh wait, we have an envelope here that I completely forgot about, and I think the train is going to make noise now. Right on time, right on time. So in this envelope, we have The Empire of Dirt by Francesca Menfredi, translated by Ekin Oklap. I'm probably mispronouncing that, so I apologize. But this follows a mother, a daughter, and a grandmother, all living in the Italian countryside. And the grandmother is very superstitious, but the mother doesn't believe in any of that. But in 1996, Valentina gets her period, and the curse is suddenly very real for this household. This one sounds amazing because I love an exploration of a grandmother, a mother, and a daughter, especially during a very pivotal moment in this daughter's life where she is getting her period and people seem to believe that she has suddenly become a woman. So I'm very keen to read about this curse, it's seems like it has a lot of magical realism to it and I'm also very happy that it's a translated fiction because I'm always trying to read works that are published outside of America. So this is translated from Italian and it's also less than 200 pages 
which I love. I love a good short book. I think this cover is absolutely beautiful but also haunting because it has like a weird bug on it and I don't really appreciate that. So like here it's beautiful but here it's haunting. So that's really cool. So thank you so much to WW Norton for sending this my way. It sounds amazing. Now let's move on to this mysterious box. And this is a box for How to Fall Out of Love Madly by Jaina Casale. And at the top of the synopsis, it says this is not a love story. It says that this book explores women's relationships with one another, their mothers, their work, men, and themselves to reveal their underlying power and complexity. It asks why do so many smart, compassionate, otherwise empowered women tolerate egregious behavior from the men that they love and what will it take for them to reclaim control that whole like last paragraph of the synopsis sounds amazing i love exploring the complexities of what it's like to be a woman in society especially a woman in her career and the relationships that she's in i think that you can explore that in so many different ways because people are in so many different circumstances so this sounds amazing it sounds like one of those like hot girl reads that you would see on instagram or tiktok where it follows women who are very messy going through a lot in life but they are learning some very big life lessons as they are transitioning to another chapter of their life but they don't even realize it yet so thank you so much to random house for sending this my way it sounds perfect for me. The next box is actually from Versed and they are a skincare brand that I have been slowly falling in love with because I've seen so many of my friends use them on Instagram and I wanted to try out for myself. So Versed reached out to me to send me a couple of their products and I wanted to show you what they all are. So here we have their brightening solution which is a nice toner. Then we have some moisturizing cream. A cleansing balm to take off your makeup without micellar water. Micellar water? Micellar water. I actually don't know how to say that word. I've only ever said it in my head and I said it out loud and I was like, that doesn't feel right. I'm gonna say micellar water, but micellar water sounds better. Okay, I'm gonna move on. And then we have their retinol serum. So I have incredibly sensitive skin. Like anytime I try a new product, it will burn my face, create a really bad reaction. So I'm very hesitant to try new products, but I have been slowly implementing versed products into my skincare routine. I've been trying out one at a time to see if it will irritate my skin. And I'm very happy to say that none of these products have irritated my skin, which is a very big deal for me because I have quite literally the most sensitive skin in the world so when i say that this is good for sensitive skin i really mean it and they're also vegan cruelty free and sustainably made so i am just so excited to add this to my skincare routine and use it on a daily basis and now i'm just a bigger fan of versed and they also sent me a really cute little headband to wear when i'm doing my skincare routine thank you so much to verse for sending this my way let's move on to the next box that i have here and this one is from Penguin Random House Audio. So in the box, it says, I listen to books that play and they have so many goodies that they provided me and I am just so happy with all of them. So first we have a pop socket. I have quickly become obsessed with pop sockets. I currently don't have one on my new phone and it haunts me because it's just, it's a way of life. Once you're the, part of the pop socket life, it changes you. So now I have a pop socket to add to my phone. I'm so happy about that. Then we have a bunch of different postcards featuring some of their titles that are coming out this summer on audiobook. I listen to a lot of audiobooks through their app because they have a lot of them available to review. So I get to listen to them a little bit earlier and I just, I just love audiobooks so much. I would not be as quick of a reader if I did not have audiobooks in my life. Then we have some wireless earphones, which is amazing. And an adorable pride themed tote bag featuring a bunch of different people and it's rainbow themed. I think this is so beautiful. It's also really well made and very thick. So you can probably carry a lot of books and a lot of just a bunch of junk in your tote bag like I always do. I have so much stuff in my tote bag I can never find my phone in it and it always haunts me. And then we have a water bottle that says I listen to books that play. And to finish off this book box we have a towel. So thank you so much to Penguin Random House for sending that my way. I love your audiobooks. I love audiobooks in general. If you have not tried out audiobooks before I highly recommend that you do. They are just a game changer in terms of reading. Let's move on to the last box that we have here for the unboxing. This is all not from Penguin Random House. I have a couple of books from Penguin Random House and then a bunch of other books that I just kind of put in here because I didn't want to keep all these envelopes in my room. So let's get this gigantic, very heavy box onto my lap 
And let me show you the Penguin Random House books first. First off, we have Lore Olympus Volume 2. I have already read this and loved this, and I just love rereading this story and falling in love with these characters all over again. And I'm just so happy that I'm able to collect one of my favorite webtoons of all time physically and have them on my shelf and falling in love with this story again was so much fun. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling exploring all the different gods in Olympus and it is just so fun, so dramatic, so serious yet heartwarming. I am so happy I have this in my hands. The next book that I have to show you is Sirens and Muses and I am actually currently reading this. Sirens and Muses follows four different artists as they attend an elite art school and they are drawn into the world of rivalry and desire and it's pretentious and beautifully written and I'm 50 pages in to it and I'm really enjoying it. I come from a family of artists so being able to be in the mind of artists and the way that they think and kind of capture the world into their art is very fascinating. I've never really read a book about artists. I have heard nothing but good things from people who I follow who have read it already and I am just very happy with it. I think the cover is beautiful and I cannot wait to dive into it a little bit deeper. And the last three books that I got from Random House are the Lord of the Rings books. Yes! Yes, you heard it here, folks. I have the Lord of the Rings books in my hands. They have the covers from the Rings of Power series, and I genuinely love these show tie-in editions. I think they're really beautiful and capture the essence of the Lord of the Rings. I think it's very simplistic, but also just very intriguing. I already started perusing through the Fellowship of the Ring, and I think I'm going to love it. I loved The Hobbit, so I think I'm definitely going to love this series. I'm just very intimidated by it because this is a pretty big series, and this is also the series of one of my favorite movie series of all time. So I'm excited to see how it compares and contrasts to the movie, and I definitely do want to do a reading vlog for The Fellowship of the Ring to talk about my experience reading it for the first time to talk about how I compare it to the movie because that is such a big part of my life. That is what got me into my love for fiction. So I'm just really happy I have these in my hands. It's finally coming to a full circle because I started watching The Lord of the Rings when I was like five years old and now I am about to turn 25 and I'm finally going to dive into the series. It just feels very warm and fuzzy inside. I love this series so much. I think it's just so fun and I just also love how Tolkien just loves nature so much. So I'm excited to read about all the descriptions of nature that he has in this series because I know there's a lot. It finally happened. I have the series in my hands. I'm going to read them. I am so excited, beyond excited. Now let's move on to some books that I have gotten from my wish list, which people kindly gifted to me. So we have three books from Matt, which is super generous because Matt always gives me a book from my wish list along with a couple of other books that he just highly recommends for me. So from my wish list, he gifted me Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. This will be one of my first James Baldwin reads and one of my friends said that she absolutely loved this book, so I'm very excited to get to this. Even even though the font is so tiny. Why did they do that to me? I'm too old for this. Make bigger fonts. Make bigger fonts 2022. That's my campaign because I feel like some of the fonts today, they're a little bit too small for me and I have glasses and I can see well. And still, I'm like, that's a bit small. Then Matt also gifted me Upstream by Mary Oliver and A Pursuit of Love by Nancy Mitford. This is actually an Amazon series, which I did not know about at all, but a friend messaged me because I posted about it on my Instagram stories, and she said that the book is really fun and the show is really fun as well. And Upstream by Mary Oliver is a collection of essays kind of exploring her love for nature and the way that she loves to get lost in it. And I love nature so much, hence why I want to dress exclusively and earth tones and I'm very keen to dive into this because so many people tell me that it's one of the most beautiful things that they have read and they really love Mary Oliver. I have tried out Mary Oliver's poetry and I'm not that connected to it but I'm really keen on diving into her essays because I think I will connect with them a little bit more and I just want to hear what she has to say about nature and the importance of it. So thank you so much to Matt for gifting me these three books. The next book that was gifted to me off my wish list was from John and it is Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. 
Aurelius. Yes, Marcus Aurelius, the Roman Emperor. I took a philosophy course in college and just recently started diving into different beliefs that people have. And one that I really connected with was Stoicism. I think that I can learn a lot from Stoicism. I don't necessarily agree with everything about Stoicism, but I think that there's a lot to learn from it. The best way I can describe Stoicism is kind of looking at life from two different points of views things you can control and things you cannot control. There's a lot more things in life that you cannot control versus things that you can control, things that you can influence with your own behavior. So you have to compartmentalize what you can control versus what you can't. This is definitely something that I think I'm going to keep on my bedside table and read every so often to get a couple of passages of insight. And a lot of people on Reddit told me that Gregory Hayes, who translated this book, has the most authentic translation and the most accessible one. So I am very happy that I have this in my hands. Thank you so much to John for sending it my way. The last book for this entire unboxing was sent to me by Harper Voyager, so thank you so much to them. And it is Babel by R.F. Kuang. So we follow our main character, Robin, who was orphaned and brought to London by a mysterious professor. There, he learns a bunch of different languages and gets enrolled in Oxford University's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation, also known as Babel. It says that Babel is the world center of translation and more importantly, silver working. Silver working has made the British Empire unparalleled in power and Babel's research in foreign language serves the empire's quest to colonize everything it encounters. And it says that as he is working in Babel, he is torn between working there or joining the Hermes Society, which is set to sabotage the silver working industry. It says that Babel is a thematic response to the secret history and a tonal response to Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. It grapples with students' revolutions, colonial resistance, and the use of translation as a tool of empire. R.F. Kwan, from what I've seen online, is such an intelligent person. They have so much knowledge and just so much insight, and I just know that their exploration of Oxford University and this mysterious institution called Babel is going to be such an important conversation centered around academia as a whole and how academia is inherently white-centric and how it has a lot of different issues issues and how it could be a hostile environment to marginalized students. I was also thinking of doing a fictional academia reading blog where I read one about an art school and I read one about a fantastical Oxford University. I think that reading these two books in one reading blog can be really fun. I'm not going to compare or contrast them because they're completely different in two separate stories, but I think having a themed reading blog where I read fictional academic stories would be really fun, so I think I'm going to do that. It might come a little bit later because because this is a very big, big book and I'm going to have to take a lot of time to get through it. But I think that this would be a really fun idea to explore fictional universities and see the different horrors that are inside of it. <laughs> so thank you so, so much to Harper Voyager for sending this my way. Oh my goodness, that is the end of this unboxing. It was a long video to film because I had to take a lot of breaks because someone out there was cutting grass, sabotaging my video, but I did it. I filmed this just for you. I hope you enjoyed this type of video where I saved up a bunch of different packages to unbox it for you to see and let me know which book you were most excited for me to read or you're most excited to read in general. Let me know if you've read any of these books, what you thought about them, what you think about my reading blog ideas, and let me know if you want me to do more of these unboxing videos in the future. Thank you so much to Versed and all these publishers for sending me such amazing packages and thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. If there is a box emoji, leave a box emoji down below to see who stays around for the longest in all my videos. If you do, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for sticking around and if you want to follow me anywhere else, all my social media links will be down below and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!